Meeting news and information needs in rural communities is more important now than ever before. False or inaccurate information, especially that which is deliberately intended to deceive, is a concern. At a time when overall trust in media is steadily declining, a study from the Washington Post Kaiser Family Foundation found that 60% of rural Americans believe the media respects them only a little or not at all. The fact that they're covered less only makes the problem worse. Here with us today is Dana Kester. She's an associate professor at West Virginia University, editor-in-chief for the collaborative media outlet 100 Days in Appalachia, and director of the New Start Fellowship Program. Her work focuses on technology and community media with special interests in audience building and new economic models for sustaining journalism. Thanks for being with us today. So I want to start with some of the research that you look at, and that is how social media is being used to target particular populations in, West, uh, in Appalachia, who's doing the targeting, and who are the targets? Okay, well, there's a couple different uh, things going on there. Um, one is we very specifically are looking at um, uh, white supremacist activity targeting. No. Um, our particular research is looking at, at youth um, and who are, who are highly vulnerable to misinformation and disinformation. And there's an interesting ecosystem in rural where um, there may be an over-reliance on um, uh, internet access devices and gamings for youth when there is a lack of extracurricular enrichment. There's uh, geographic remoteness in rural communities. So when a, a kid is spending um, upwards of eight hours a day in mm. a space, you can see how readily... Um, uh, how, how easily they can be manipulated in that space. But I will also speak to adults in communities where um, the, what you mentioned about rural having a lack of trust in, um, in particular in national media or what we would call elite media. Yeah. Um, that is warranted. <clears throat> I mean, I'm a member of these communities and I see how um, Appalachia or rural communities are represented. Um, so it's not just that we're not covered, it's when we are covered, it's often, um, we're, we're covered wrong in a, in a way that doesn't represent a truth that we feel or know, our lived experiences. And, um, and that's partly why we did 100 Days in Appalachia. Um, but there is a lot of work to be done to rebuild um, trust in not just Appalachia, but in rural um, America at large. And I think it's going to be a decades-long um, decades-long challenge, and I will say, um, since <clears throat> right after uh, the election, there was a lot of well-intentioned effort by um, national and international media. People were doing their rural bus tours, mm. and um, but as we were gearing up for another election, and I see the coverage start to happen, um, not a lot has changed. So what is a, uh, a, a that unpacks a couple of things for me. <clears throat> One, um, so you, you say basically that the targets are kind of uh, in a rich environment because there is a lack of trust in the, in the large-scale media, they're, they're, uh, there's not other enrichment programs, and they're stuck on their phones or wherever, and so that actually makes them more susceptible to alternative sources of information, and including racists that might be trying to target them, right? And recruit them, really, yes. into the cause. Um, is it, A, is it working? It's a very complicated grooming process. I, I will say that in the research that we've done, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> all right, let me say. Um, I will say that in the research that we've done, um, we are looking at upwards of 60% of youth being impacted in some of these communities. And it's really, really important to understand, it, it, you know, it's not just a lack of enrichment programs. It is also a lack of alternative, I mean, these are not youth that are, cons they're not watching television. They're, they're primary, their entire form of uh, media entertainment is through gaming and social media, mm. a space that is largely unregulated. It is largely absent of, just by nature of its design, absent of um, parental engagement or other um, oversight. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, we, we kind of call it raised by wolves, with the wolves being AI, bots, trolls, mm. and, uh, and organized um, groups that are targeting uh, those youth. It's a, it's a public um, mental health crisis, some of our experts have said. 
So then the other part that you were talking about, which was interesting to me, is also how, how should the idea of elite media or whomever cover these communities better? What are ways that they can, is it about building partnerships with existing media that's on the ground instead of parachuting in? You know, how, how do you do yes. it? Yes, so I think the most important thing is, I mean, part of the reason we are a collaborative media outlet is that we, we are trying to rally um, local and, and regional orgs to report together. And to, and to work together to do that. And we consider partners in that, um, these external media outlets. Um, we're actually in the process right now of creating a document for the 2020 sort of election uh, reporting period on how to and how not to cover Appalachia and, um, and to create and, and to provide a database of the very talented reporters, mm -hmm. photographers, media makers in the region, um, as well. Who already have the Rolodex, yes. who already have the relationships, yes. right? And they yes. have the Call trust <laughs> of some of their, their kids are on the same softball teams, yes. et cetera, right? Well, and also working directly, it's not just working with journalists, it's also working with community members who help vet context because um, it's, it is, and, and not and when we say community members of that context, we don't mean officials. We don't mean mayors and community yeah. organizer, organizers. We mean, um, you know, like the soccer coach or the, the, the folks at the fire station or people who are in the community who understand particular issues and who can help make sure you get it right. And I know journalists fundamentally want to get it right. Yeah. Um, but there's some work that needs to be done on the part of the journalists um, to do that listening. Are you optimistic? I mean, it, some of, some of the, the challenges that these rural communities are facing seem pretty steep and they seem pretty long term. How do we fix it? I am optimistic because um, the, the New Start Fellowship Project is about working with viable local news outlets that are still profitable, that have trust in their community, that have a legacy, some going back many decades. And um, I, I think, I, I often like to say that it's not a rescue operation for local news. I actually think local news is what's gonna save mm. us. And that's where we should be putting our, um, our energy, our resources, um, our support, um, because that is a system that's not broken. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about metropolitan dailies and sort of um, suburban size news outlets. I'm talking about, you know, micro mom and pop yeah. weeklies and dailies that um, that should be sort of our front line of building trust in rural Appalachia and America. Good note to end on. Dana Kester, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.